Well, good evening. Good evening. It is good to be in God's house this evening, and uh, it is a, an honor and a privilege to, to be here and to share with you folks and uh, be a part of uh, your revival service. And it's like the, the brother prayed me back earlier about, uh, you know, there, I don't believe there's a one of us that wouldn't like to see every seat in here filled up. Amen. You know, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go a step further. I would much rather see every individual here filled. Because if we get to that point, these seats will take care of themselves. Amen. If you and I get to the point where we should be with God, and I'm not talking about you guys, I'm talking about all of us. I'm talking about the church worldwide. Because, I mean, this this is not a unique problem. I mean, as far as folks not turning out for revival services, all there. I mean, there's, especially in the summertime, you got extended daylight, and folks are, especially around here on the lake, man, folks are fishing, and they're cutting grass, and they're just doing just about everything they possibly can do besides be in God's house. And, uh, you know, we wonder what it's going to take. Is it the next... Uh, national tragedy that will get folks uh, back on their knees for God? You know? Well, I'm going to tell you what it's going to take. It's going to take the church. Because we've had national tragedies. Uh, your pastor and I were talking earlier in, uh, about 9-11. And uh, I was pastoring the church back then. And, and, and uh, I love church. I had a little small country church. And folks just flocked in. And they just, it was the end of the world. That they knew that, that God had to be coming back for as much uh, tragedy and things that were going on, that God had to be coming back, that God had had enough, so they were going to be in church. Well, when God didn't show up, uh, you know, they kind of drifted away. Back, uh, Y2K was another one. Man, I mean, uh, 1999, December 31st, midnight. Everybody, I knew people that bought food, they bought ammunition, they, they, they stored things up. Well, that morning I got up on the, on the 31st and uh, told my wife, I said, well, might as well run to Walmart, pick up some batteries. The world's going to come to the end tonight. You know, what good would some batteries have done if the world would have come to an end? It's going to take people like you and me doing what God has called us to do, and that's to, that's to love Him. Uh, my youth pastor has been teaching our, 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 uh, doing our children's sermon, and the last several weeks he's been doing memory verses and stuff, and uh, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy strength. And we, you know, we, we see that. We sing songs like, I surrender all. We sing, so we sing songs that revive us again. And yet, we wonder why sometimes, why why doesn't the Spirit of God fall upon us? I want to share with you tonight a passage from Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 20. Uh, I'm going to read just one passage, and we're going to talk about what's, what's transpiring here. Jeremiah chapter 20, and we're going to look at verse 9. And uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, a lot of country folks around, we've all built fires before. But Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9 reads this. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Father in heaven, we rejoice tonight. We rejoice, Father God, for being able to be here in this house, Father. Father, the first night of revival service. And Father, I pray that tonight we, we turn our eyes and our ears toward you, O oh God. Father, we want to hear from you, Father. We want to we want to leave here tonight, Father, saying it has been good to have been in that house. And Father, I pray for a double portion of your anointing tonight. Father, I, I just pray that, that, again, hearts and lives, Father, can be changed here tonight. Father, if we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, Father, maybe we'll leave her tonight with that fire burning very bright tonight. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the prophet Jeremiah, Father God, that, that had a burden on his heart, even though he was downtrodden, 
But Father, this word is immortalized in Scripture for us this very night. But most of all, Father, we want to thank you for Jesus. And it's in his precious name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now you may say, well, Brother Rick, that's just one verse. What, what does that one verse have to do with anything? Well, Jeremiah was... God had, had given him a message. And he was... He was like a lot of preachers today. He was nearing burnout. Maybe just folks wouldn't listen. Folks were wondering why people wouldn't turn back to God. And, and Jeremiah was saying, I'm just... I'm just tired. I'm just burning out. People aren't listening no more. Nobody's coming to church. And it's just, why should we bother anymore? Does it sound familiar? You know, and all across our land today, you know, yeah, we see on TV these big mega churches got thousands and thousands and thousands of people. But yet our, our nation is made up of little churches just like this all across our land. And yet we wonder sometimes why why isn't God speaking to the masses today? Well, folks, I want to tell you tonight that God is speaking to the masses. We're just not listening to Him. And He's, you know, we, we, we everybody here would like to see people saved. We'd like to see folks at the altar and men, you know, take them down to the boat ramp and dunk them. You know, bring them into the kingdom. But what about you and me? I was reading an email from an uncle of mine. And, uh, it was about a man playing a violin in the middle of this orchestra. I believe I said that right. I looked that word up this morning. And during the middle of it, one of his strings broke. And normally, when the string on a violin breaks, well, you can't make the right note. And they would have to stop. But he wanted to keep going. And he had enough inside of him that he made even more beautiful music with just three strings. And we may think that we're down to three strings, maybe because of age or maybe a disability. Maybe it's just because we are just burnt slap out. Maybe we're down to two strings. Maybe we ain't got no strings left at all. Maybe we're just an old instrument that needs to be restrung. But folks, if we're willing, God, that's what God wants from you and I. Folks, we don't have to have all the parts. That, that's, that's the problem with, with, with churches today. My church is just as bad as any others. Just as good as any others too, by the way. But sometimes we, we look at things and we say, well, pastor, we need to let so-and-so take care of that. And God said, I'm, but I want you. I, I want friendship. I want New Hope. I want Fairmont. I want Rosevine. I want, I want my church to do what I've called it to do. And yet we wonder why we reach the stage of, oh, golly, it's Wednesday night again or Tuesday night. or Boy, Sunday morning sure got here fast. We wonder sometimes, boy, you know, I, I was 33 years old when I got saved. I was, uh, my associate pastor has this phrase, he says, I was lost as a goose in a hailstorm. I guess that's pretty lost because he uses it quite often. But I was. Of course, a lost person don't know they're lost. But uh, when God opened my eyes, I realized I was. And, uh, you know, I wanted out of that. And I was told there was only one way. And that was through, through God Almighty. To ask Jesus Christ into my heart, to my life. And folks, I got saved. And it was for real. And a little boy asked me, he said, how do you know? I said, I was there when it happened. And I was in a cab of an 18-wheeler going down the highway at 3 o'clock in the morning. And God spoke to me. And some folks say, you don't hear an audible voice, but I know, but he, he spoke so loud in my heart, I heard him hear. And I pulled that truck off the side of the road, and I got out, and I just, my altar was a big old tire in front of that semi. And I said, Lord, where have you been? He said, I've been here all alone. Where have you been? I mean, just, and that was mind-boggling to me, that, that he would speak to this old, I mean, because at that moment he was showing me who I was and what I was. And I thought I was really something back then. 
But when he showed me what I really was, I was a sinner bound for hell. And God showed me. And I set my feet on that path. And, and folks, it's not been... I, I heard an old boy say, man, man I, it's been such an easy walk. I said, you must mind be walking the same path I'm walking in. Because it's tough. The Call of the Wild. You remember that old book? Man, that, listen, you drive up, and I'm from Louisiana. Don't hold that against me, by the way. <laughs> but uh, up in Shreveport. I mean, the prettiest thing in Shreveport today, in Bossier City, is in big old casinos that line in the rivers as you drive through there on I-20. Prettiest thing, especially at night. You go through, boy, they're lit up so pretty. Man, I had a, I had a preacher friend of mine tell me, man, they got good food. I said, how do you know? He said, well, I, I was just there for the food. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah. He said, won't you come on go? He said, man, if you, you're a big boy. You like to eat? I said, I sure do. I said, but you know what? I said, me and you, we could go in there. We could just eat ourselves silly. You know, that takes a while, too. I said, man, we used to come out of there. We might see somebody that said, ain't you the pastor over at New Hope? Why ain't you brother so-and-so? What you preachers doing? Oh, we was just eating. I mean, you can look at us and probably tell that. But you know what that does for our witness? For you and I as God's children. Well, folks, there's a fire in my bones that, that even though I get downtrodden, even though I get tired, and, and sometimes you just want to say, Lord, Lord, you do something with them. And he said, well, son, just step out of the way and let me do it. And sometimes God shows up in spite of me. Most of the time, by the way. You know, and that's, that's the beauty of what God is. But if we let Him, folks, He will use each and every one of us here tonight. We just got to be willing. We may be down to that one string on that, on that guitar or fiddle. or you may, you may sound like the organ ever squeal a little bit. Oh, my goodness, need to get rid of that thing. But you know what? It's still making beautiful music. You know? Jeremiah had a fire down with it. He, he was basically telling the Lord, Lord, I've done everything you've told me to do, and they're not, they're not responding, and I'm ready to give up. But somewhere deep inside of him, the very Holy Spirit of God still had an ember glowing. Now, I was raised up in a little old house that uh, we didn't get indoor plumbing until I was eight years old. You might not believe that, but that's the truth. Had a little outhouse in the back. And my grandpa and them, they had, you know, they had a two-seater. And they was really up town. They had a star on one door and a moon on the other. You know, we on one side and the end of the other. But we had one, and, and, uh, and we had an old wood stove in the back. And every now and then, uh, uh, when I was the youngest of three boys, uh, I had a little sister that came along 12 years later and messed everything up. But I, I was the baby for quite a while. But uh, normally my older brother would have to get up and, and build a fire. And my daddy usually got up about 4.30 and uh, he'd get my brother up and to go in there and build a fire in the little wood stove there. Of course, he'd put the coffee pot on top of it and make coffee. But normally at night, right before we went to bed in the wintertime, he'd put a, make sure he put a big log on that fire. They would burn down. That way in the morning, he wouldn't have to start fresh. There'd be some hot coals still in that fire. That way he'd just go in. We had a I don't know where he brought it from, but it was a big old rich lighted stump about yay big around. We'd go cut splinters. Y'all know what splinters are. Build that fire with him. We'd throw them in there and build that fire. By the time I got up, you know, normally had a had a fire going, but but I would walk across the old cold floor wanting to get close to that heater as I possibly could. But my brother would be he'd be in there stoking that, that one coal and get that fire going. And finally it would and it'd start warming the house up. Maybe you're here tonight, and maybe, maybe you need to be stoked up. Maybe that coal is it, it's there, folks. If you've got Christ inside of you, that, that coal is still there. Maybe it's an ember. Maybe it needs a poker to give it a jab or two. You know? Because there's been times in my life, even as a pastor, you get down and get discouraged, and somebody come along, boy, with that fire poker and just give me a charge up. Maybe it's get to go to a revival meeting or some pastor's conference or something and, and 
you know, and, 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 and understand that we're not in this alone. Friendship, you're not in this alone. You know, folks, we're in this together. We're, we are the family of God. We are the army of God. But the army of God is sitting back on the back road far too long. You know, folks, it's time for you and I to do what God has called us to do. You know, I heard this brother praying about that. Maybe show some, some interest of, of getting folks in church. You know, we can't just say, well, they, they're not going to come. They're not going to come. I, I told my church when I first got there at New Hope about three and a half years ago, I said, my job as a pastor is to shepherd the sheep, not round up old goats. <laughs> One deacon said, well, you ain't got many sheep, but you got a bunch of old goats around that need to be rounded up. <laughs> he said, so before you can get to shepherding, you need to start producing some rounding up. And, uh, so we went around and round and round. And, you know, there's still, uh, you could probably look at your church role and, you know, I, I look at mine and, Somebody said, well, boy, you're, you're doing pretty good. I said, well, they had another boy ask me, how many you got on roll? I said, well, about 250. He said, how many show up? I said, nah. I said, not near that many. I said, the FBI couldn't find most of them. <laughs> you know, just folks have got disinterested, have gotten just uh, that, that, that fire has, has I started to go out. But you know what? It might be a phone call. It might be a, a stop by. It might be a, a cake bake to spark somebody's interest. It might be just a, a walk by and say, hey, how you doing? I hadn't seen you in a while. Uh, to, to get folks in, in back in. But before you and I can worry about our brothers or our sisters, we got to have our fire burning. So the pastor, was, we were, he come by and picked us up, by the way. I did wide of him. It was a ride down here. He even opened the door for my wife. I said, boy, he's really spoiling her, you know. Uh, I said, if he's outside opening doors, he's going to get my mother excited, you know. Uh, but, you know, sometimes folks need encouraging, but sometimes it needs and then just a little bit more than that. Sometimes, you know, man, you can get that old, especially uh, as I was raised up on, uh, there on Toledo Bend on the north end of it. And uh, me and my brothers, we were, I was seven or eight when the lake first came in. And, I mean, we built fire campfires at night, stayed on the lake. And, uh, boy, they'd be down there trying to get them embers hot and, Throwing pine straw on before smoking us all up, making it stink real bad. And, you know, and sometimes he'd just get mad, Moses' brother, and he'd just give it a kick. I mean, get all, all of a sudden, of course, we'd have fire everywhere then. He said, well, I got it going. He said, I just needed a good swift kick in the ashes. Maybe that's what you and I need. Sometimes. Just a good swift kick in the ashes and get our fire started. You know? And you may say, well, man, boy, that's pretty close, preacher. What? Sometimes we need to plow close to the corn. You know? Sometimes we need to get folks' attention. And, and, uh, here, uh, about two and a half months ago, we had revival service at our church. and Oh, we brought some big evangelist in. And he was, I mean, when I say big, I, I don't mean big name. I mean big evangelist. He's about this big around. Call him Big Papa. Got from Nashville, Tennessee. and Brought in a big singing group and stuff. Man, we had we had four days of just good preaching and good singing and just uh, uh, folks making decisions and stuff. But you go back over a day and it's it, it as if it never even happened. Wait for the next one. But we had a good time, Pastor, that week. Listen, two weeks from now, don't be saying, boy, Brother Mike, we really had a good time during the revival. Except for that first preacher, you could have got somebody else. You know, friends like that, you don't need enemies, I guarantee you. But you know what, folks? It's, it's about, again, it's about you and I reaching down and letting God stoke that fire for us. And Him, you and I get to a point in our life where we say, Lord, 
Only you. You see, the, the, before we get to that point, though, you and I have to extinguish. And you say, well, no, wait a minute. You just want to build a fire, now you want to extinguish. We've got to extinguish all other means and let God do it. Because I can't build a fire. Your pastor can't build a fire. You know, your deacon can't build a fire. Your psalm leader. Only God can do that. Because if I build that fire, you know what, in, in, in a week's time, or maybe by tomorrow morning, it'll be gone. You might even, boy, I'm sure like that guy. And I come by and ask you tomorrow, well, what are you preaching? Well, let's see. I really don't know. It's gone now. But if God starts something in us, folks, then it's for real. Then we'll see folks that'll, that'll, that'll reach down and, and help another. That'll go that extra mile. That'll, that'll do what is necessary to be done. Uh, this past Sunday, I, uh, we've got, I don't know, a fairly large church ground, and uh, they just got a new tractor, and uh, I said, they, they bought it, and I've been riding it. I told them in Sunday school class, I said, look, I said, I can't do what God's called me to do sitting on top of a tractor. This week, we had two men show up start cutting grass. I said, well, praise God. You know? Now, whether they'll come back next week will be a different story. You know? But they was there this week. So I'll fire them up again this Sunday, you know. Uh, maybe sometimes we, we need a good good yanking, get our chain yanked every now and then. You know, because we do, folks, we do get in, in, into a rut. Again, I remember stories as a little boy. Uh, we lived down an old dirt road. I say dirt, it was mostly red clay. And red clay's pretty good when it's dry. But you don't have to get wet. My daddy always got up early and he worked at the mill there in Zawali. And he was always the first one out because we lived at the end of the road down by the lake. And when it, during the rainy season, the winter time, he'd always go out and he'd make a rut from one end of that road all the way down to the highway. And anybody else that came out, you know what they done? They got in his rut. And they went out. And the next one, they got out. They got in that rut. You, by, the, by the time the, the last one went out, you could just about get in that rut and let go of the steering wheel, and it would drive, take you all the way to the road just by itself. And then when it, really, when it dried up, I mean, you had a good rut. This, you didn't have to drive at all. You just flop over that rut. That's where churches are today. We've done something for so long that we can just about close our eyes and do it. I know I, I, my church, this man, I can, I can walk in there, close my eyes, and tell them how many songs they're going to sing and about the time it's going to stop. We're predictable. You know what a rut is? It's a grave with both ends kicked out. That's what a rut is. And a lot of our churches today, a lot of us individuals, we're in ruts. And maybe we call that rut tradition. Maybe old traditions run so deep that well, Pastor, that's just the way we've always done it. Well, when I got to New Hope, I, I heard that. That church's been there 160-something years. Pastor, this is the way we've always done it. What you mean? Was you here when they put this thing here? Was you a founding member? You know? No. But you've been doing it the same way. And I used to tell him, I said, if you keep doing the same thing the same way, you'll get the same thing you got. He said, that's kind of deep. That's that rut normally is. And they're hard to come out of. Now, now when I finally got my driver's license, and I take out on that winter mornings going to school, man, I was like Garth Brooks. I wanted to go against the grain. I didn't want to ride in the rut. You know what happened most of the time? Slide off in the ditch. Go home and get somebody else come get a big truck come. How come you didn't follow the rut? Well, that's what everybody does. Just like our churches today. You know? Folks, we need to get out of the rut. We need to plow new ground. God won't let you fall in the ditch. Won't let you. Now, there's some traditions, man, that, that yes, God Almighty give us and we need to hold still to. But there are some that we, we do as, 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 as good God-fearing Baptists bless our hearts. You know, that, man, we need to shake off and move on. 
I want to close with a story. There's always a story from a good Baptist preacher. About an old mule. His name was Mike. Well, old Mike fell in a hole one day. What it was was an old well. The old farmer walked by and he's hollering for Mike. Mike! Didn't see Mike know, but he could hear him. Man, just doing what mules do, you know. Whatever mules do. He started walking toward the sound and he got toward the old well and he looked down there and there's Mike in the hole looking up at him. The farmer said, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mike's thinking, well, you got to get me out of here. So the old farmer started to go around to some of his neighbors and, and they all come in they looking down the well and he said, well, I believe this is the end of the road for Mike. There ain't no way we can get him out of there. One of them said, I guess we just better cover him up. His ear stood up, cover me up. So the old man, they went back to the home to come back with shovels and stuff. They started shoveling dirt in that hole. You can see old Mike, the light bulb come on. You know what the idea? Ding. They throw a shovel of dirt and hit him on the back and he'd shake it off. And step up. They kept shoveling. He kept shoveling, and he'd just shake it off and step up. To finally, he stepped out on level ground. Yes. Folks, sometimes we've got to overcome adversity by shaking it off and stepping up. That's what God wants us to do tonight, is shake it off and step up. Maybe it's a good swift kick we need. Sometimes that old mule don't want to go. We need a good swift kick. Listen, careful what you ask the Lord for, because it just might give it to you. I had a friend of mine said he wanted to help quit smoking. I said, you know, I said, are you really wanting to quit? He said, yeah, I really want to quit. I said, all right, let's pray. So we prayed. And I kept praying and praying for him every day. That's the incoming Sunday, and he said, man, I just, I'm, I'm sick. I'm sick. I said, you still smoking? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to quit, though. I'm trying to quit. I just started praying hard. Lord, make him sicker. <laughs> he just got sicker. Finally he called me and said, you got to stop praying. It's about to kill me. <laughs> I said, it ain't me about to kill you. I said, God has given you a sturgeon, son. I said, you got to do one or two things. You got to tell him you're ready to quit and quit. Or you got to tell him, Lord, I'm not ready to quit yet. And let me, let me be. He's still smoking today. Still smoking. I said, you know, I, I, I said, but at least he was honest. Careful what we pray for. We just might get it. We just might get it. Father God, we just thank you tonight. We thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for Jeremiah. Father, that had that, that fire down deep inside. Father, we thank you that he didn't he didn't quit. Father, we know he, he come to the end of his rope that he wanted to throw up his hands and quit. He wanted to quit preaching. Father, he wanted to quit doing what, what you called him to do. But, Father, that fire wouldn't let him stop. That fire being your Holy Spirit. Tonight, Father God, right here in this room, there may be some here tonight, Father, that maybe that fire has died down. And Father, we just pray tonight that we need a swift kick from the Holy Ghost, Father, to, to stir that fire back up within us. Stir that passion up, Father, that, that we once had. Father, to share a, a Christian witness, to live that Christian life. Father, tonight we know that this world we live in is in, is in terrible shape. But, Father, we know that you have the recipe for revival. Father, that if your people will do what you call them to do, that you will stir up that fire within us. And tonight, Father God, hear it. At Friendship Baptist Church. Here on the lake, Father, we just pray for, again, that, that fire to, to light up in, we, in, in each of us. Let tonight, Father, be the, be the catalyst of a, a revival that you'll start, Father, not just tonight, but, Father, throughout this week, Father, but that'll carry on, that we'll be talking about it for years to come of what, what took place this very week here at Friendship Baptist Church. Father, I pray for this pastor. 
Father, as he leads his flock, Father, I pray for, for each one, the, the, for their deacon, Father, and his wife, and the Father, for, for all, Father, that have come. And Father, let us let us come together tonight in, in, in agreement, Father, that we need a revival from you. Oh, Father, we just want to praise you. We want to magnify and glorify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.